All right, guys. I've seen a lot of comments and a lot of posts complaining about the hive bomb. Hive, bees, bugs, insects, whatever you call it. A lot of people have trouble with this item, and I'm constantly hearing people say, every time I throw bees, they just come back at me, they don't go on the enemy, bees suck, they don't serve a purpose, etc. So I wanted to make a short little video here explaining how the bees work, how you can utilize them, and show you different ways that you can use the bees, and show you a couple of clips of the bees in action putting these ideas to use. And remember, if you like what I do or find any of this helpful, maybe check me out here and here. First up, how do the bees find their target? When thrown, the bees form an entity that fire a 360 degree hit scan looking for a target that it has a direct path and a direct line of sight to. This has a 20 meter range, which you can see represented here with the red line versus the white line. If I throw it when it's red, it can see me, it's coming back. If I can throw it and it's white, it cannot see me, it will not come back at me. So even though I threw that in plain view of myself, it's not coming back, it'll sit there for as long as I don't get any closer to it. No amount of jumping, running, sprinting, noise, anything like that is going to change it as long as I stay outside of its range. Now as soon as I move inside of its range, it will identify me as the target and aggro onto me. Once it's on its target, it will not switch. It's not going to choose somebody else just because they also get close. However, two hunters can be damaged by one hive bomb if they're right on top of each other, i.e. if you try to melee someone. Once a hive bomb is on you, remove it with three light melees from your knife two from a knuckle knife, one from a bomb lance. I want to point out that multiple hive bombs do stack and they will each individually take three swipes to remove. So I'm gonna throw two hive bombs here. They're both gonna aggro onto me and you'll see that it takes me six total swipes to get both of them off of me. This means the bees are on me for longer, they do more total damage, and they do a longer poison duration. And keep in mind that the default knife has five swings worth of stamina in it not counting for stamina shots, determination, stuff like that. So any hive bombs over the first one, two, three, etc., are harder and harder to remove because they won't have the stamina to swipe as quickly as they normally would. I also want to point out real quick that these thrown in the water will not go off. They won't detonate because they didn't hit the ground. The jar didn't break. The jar can be shot after the fact to detonate the bees. It will then form the swarm on the spot and aggro as it normally would. And then just to demonstrate real quick, the heavy melee attack does not speed up the rate at which you remove the swarm, so light melees are your best bet. That's what you should go with. Alright, next up I want to demonstrate how the line of sight works and how you can use this to throw your bees and make sure that they don't come back at you. Keep this in mind anytime somebody's on the other side of a mound. If you throw it to the other side, they can see them, not you. It'll choose them, not you. So right here, you'll see I'll throw it to the other side of this little mound. And even though it's pretty open, and I'll be able to see the bees, I can see the swarm after the jar breaks. Because it does not have a direct line of sight to me, it will not choose me as a target. It's just going to sit there. It'll wait out its 30 second duration, hoping somebody walks in line of sight. If nobody does, it'll eventually dissipate on its own. You will see, however, that as soon as I step out from behind this cover, it's able to fire its hit scan, identify me as the first person, and then the hive comes after me. I am now the hive's target, and I have to remove it with the melee swipes. So keep this in mind and pick it out any time you're choosing where to throw your bees. If they're on the other side of a mound from you, that's a good situation, because they're the only person that might be in range. But also keep in mind that this line of sight can work against you. They might be on the other side of a mound, but if they have a root or something in between and preventing line of sight, it'll choose nobody. Or if you just blindly throw it into a building, you don't know the enemy might be on the other side of a little wall. It won't find them as a target. The hive's just going to sit there. And then just to demonstrate one more time how little cover it actually takes to break that line of sight, I'm going to throw it to the other side of this little mound here, and you'll see that it's just going to sit there. It'll never choose me as a target. It'll wait out its entire duration. That's all it takes to block line of sight, so just blindly throwing them can sometimes cause the bees to not aggro an enemy just because it cannot fire that direct hit scan at your intended target. Obviously the line's red, I'm within my 20 meter range, but the hive sits there, it cannot see me. And as long as I don't go around that mound or give it a line of sight, it's not coming at me. 
Now I'm not going to sit here and stare at this hive for the full 30 second duration, but you get the idea, so we're going to move on to the next point. Alright, now that you know how the bees work, let's talk about some ways you can use them. You can use bees aggressively or offensively, and you can use them defensively. Aggressively, you could use them to just flat out try to kill somebody. You can use them to add pressure or to run somebody down. You can breach a building with them. Uh, you can throw them, watch how they trail somebody and help find someone if you weren't exactly certain where their position was. You can make people move, make them move around in buildings, listen to their footsteps, anything like that. Defensively, you can use them for area denial, buying time, removing pressure from yourself, find out if somebody's hiding on the other side of a mound, anything like that will help you out. All right, so in this first clip, you're going to see us trying to breach into Fort Bolden and get the bounty away from the team that's hiding in there. Now, as I mentioned before, whenever you're trying to breach into a building, you want to make sure that you're not just throwing it blindly in there because any wall that is between where the bee lands and where your intended target is will block the bee's line of sight. The bee will not go on them. Now, this does still have a small purpose in denying the area that the bee landed in so it limits how they can move around inside and reposition and look for new cracks and stuff like that but we want a little bit more of a direct approach we want the bees to go on the person move them away from the door or the window let me get inside or just get on them and kill them now while i think that using the bees as an outright kill weapon is the least effective way to use them i still think it is a thing and it is what we're going to end up going for on this particular target now this first throw was just designed to move them away from the window so that they can't look out it and it gives me a chance to get up the ladder. But once I throw the bees, I can hear the bees on them. I know that person's having a lot of trouble. I keep throwing bees at the sound of their footsteps and just get the kill. So there's guys back there. And more bees, you son of a bitch. He's right there. Got it with the bees. Oh no. Why don't we go to the other side of the All right, here's another example of using the bees to breach into a building. Now, I throw bees on this person, but they end up just opting to run away from the bees, which lets me run them down. Keep in mind, this adds quite a bit of pressure to them. It damages them, and then because of the poison generation, they cannot heal. So it lets me run up on them while they're kind of panicking and get the nice, easy shotgun blast in on. And then because I'm able to see the trail of the bees following them, it gives me kind of a path to follow visually, aside from just listening to footsteps and kind of know where I need to go to chase them down. Someone running? Back here. All right, on this next one, you're gonna see the bees acting as kind of an area denial. I take the bees, I throw them right there at that door, kind of prevents anybody from going through there, at least not without getting the bees on them. That limits where they can move and how they can react to me. So now that I've kind of got them denied from that door, I'm gonna reposition, gonna go find the team, and eventually what's going to happen is we're going to use more bees and the pressure of the team fight to drive them into it and then get an easy kill on them. One dead. Those bees ought to get him moving. Two bees on him. Got it. Oh, this guy's still fine. Oh Got my him. god. Here I want to show you that with a combination of that imminent layer and a jar of bees, I can actually drive this guy away from me. Uh, then with a follow-up shot from my sparks, I send him to the 1 HP and he has to worry about the fact that if those bees get on him at all, he's going to go down to them. Those bees get him. And then while we're at it, I'm just going to go ahead and point out that if bees are on a target, they can actually eat melee hits that were intended for the target. So if you try to knife somebody with bees, um, you'll hit the swarm instead of them and the knife might not kill them. Here in what ends up being a strictly defensive sense, we throw the bees over the wall, which actually chases the guy away. And then once I know that the bees have ran him off entirely, I'm able to freely combat res my teammate. You can res. You can res. Yeah, I got that girl dead right in front of there. Oh, 
Alright, this is the last clip I'm going to show you. And I'm just going to let this whole team fight play out because I feel like it's a good one. It demonstrates a couple of the different ideas I talked about. First, I used the bees offensively to try to follow up kills and chase people down. Later on, I used the bees defensively to kind of separate teammates. I get to deal with them one at a time and prevent them from pushing me after I get shot. So switching back and forth between the defensive and offensive, it just kind of demonstrates how the bees can work in your favor. Beyond that, I hope you just enjoy the clip. It's uh, it's one that I do end up losing, but that's all right. Sometimes hunt taketh away. There is one shot I feel a little bit robbed on, but oh well. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's kind of amusing. Here you go is the rest of the team fight. Headshot dead. Nice. Now it's just the guy at 90 who I just got tagged by. He has a uh, bleeding ammo. Hit. Where at? He's on uh, me with bullies. Well, this is a different guy. No, they rose uh, him. They rose. Uh, damn, I didn't realize it was a different guy. Oh. Right. Gonna get a tag. <sighs> Fuck, I fucked up. <gasps> the dually's on me. He's up near us, run, I think. Oh, he res. Damn it. Oh, oh he didn't die. Oh, he did it. Well, they're missing their shots on you. Damn it. Damn. Damn, nice trim. Alright, that's what I got for you right now. I hope it helped you out. Hope you can use some of this information and go forward throwing bees on everybody and not screwing yourself over with them. Big thanks and a shout out to these people for playing with me and helping me collect this footage.